Well, hello out there. This is Gavin. Thanks for joining us at the Holy Hour podcast. This is a podcast devoted to the legendary band The Cure, if you haven't put that together yet. And if you're new to the show, welcome. We cover all kinds of Cure talk here. We do origin tales, talk to friends, we talk to strangers, talk about live shows, videos, topics vary. But... If you haven't been following us, in the last two and a half months or so, we've been trying to keep it relevant and talk about the 2016 tour that in real time just wrapped up successfully in the last week. And um, everyone seemed to have a great time and it was a success all the way around. But for the sake of coverage, um, we still have about three shows that we want to share with you guys. And uh, last we heard, our good buddy Arusha, who's been covering all of these for us out there in the fields, with her buddies on her own, the works. Um, we last we heard, she was up in uh, Madison Square Garden, New York. So uh, coming down from from that, next one in line was Meriwether Post Pavilion in Columbia, Maryland. And uh, this will be a little quickie episode. We got two mega ones coming up for Charlotte and Atlanta, but I wanted to get this one out to you guys. Uh, in a weekly fashion here and um, didn't want to pass up the stuff that she sent me for for Meriwether because uh, there's some really cool stuff in here as she talks with her friends Jennifer and Dana and post show she talks with Megan and Hector and Jennifer again and um, really good stuff and Meriwether is a, a venue surprisingly really dear to my heart I know you're thinking what you're out in North Carolina what do you care about Columbia Maryland well funny you should ask i grew up uh in uh, stafford virginia about an hour south of dc in columbia maryland in fact is fairly close to the dc area so um it turns out that's where i saw my very first rock show uh, big pavilion pretty generic as far as pavilions go but um it was a good safe place for a seventh grader to go to his first show my brothers took me to see the b-52s and ziggy marley was opening up for them on their Cosmic Thing tour. So we were all dancing out in the field as it poured rain on us to love Shaq. And uh, from that moment on, I was hooked and uh, couldn't get enough of live music and live shows and went on to see a lot of great shows at Meriwether. Saw Morrissey there for the first time and New Order, the first and only time I've seen New Order live. And uh, even The Cure I saw twice there um, for Blood Flowers in 2000. And uh, the Curiosa tour I saw there. And uh, strangely enough, I think Arusha was probably at both those shows. Uh, small, weird world, man. But, um, yeah, so um, I couldn't pass up Meriwether. And I hope uh, you enjoy this. As I said, we, we will be moving on to Charlotte and Atlanta. And that will conclude our 2016 coverage. So um, we only got a few more of these left, but uh, I think you'll dig them. And thanks so much for, uh, for listening along. And um, we'll, we'll wrap up after this, but I'm going to hand it on over now to Arusha and gang as we get ready for The Cure at Meriwether Post Pavilion, Columbia, Maryland. Uh, hey everybody, this is Arusha, uh, reporting for the Holy Hour podcast, Arusha from Push, a Cure fan documentary, and I'm on my last three shows of the U.S. Uh, we're going to go to Maryland, Charlotte, North Carolina, and Atlanta. I'm freaking out, I gotta say, like, it's that last part of the tour where Part of me just wants to, like, not go. And part of me can't wait and doesn't want ever want it to end. Um, The tickets to Meriwether are sold out beyond belief, like, to the point where there's absolutely no general admission tickets on um, StubHub, which is very interesting. And the lawn tickets, which were $40 yesterday, are now 66 So I think tonight will be a very powerful show. I can't emphasize enough how fun it is to go to different cities to see your favorite band because where you see the band, where you sit, I mean, there's just so many elements that are wrapped up in the live experience. I had a great time in New York, and I I loved the shows, but one of my highlights was actually the after night three, we hung out with a bunch of other Cure friends 
fans um, at a bar. And um, I don't know, there was just like tender moments shared between international people from Europe and Germany and Sheffield, London, California, Orlando. Yeah, it was a, a memorable moment where I think somebody quoted that she came all the way from Sheffield alone. But she has not felt alone. When she was in New York, she hadn't felt alone for one second. Isn't that kind of interesting? Anyway, more soon. Okay, so we're inside the gig. The Cure about to go on. Uh, I'm, I'm, with, I'm with Jennifer McKee and Dana Dale. She's, she's remaining silent. She's, she's drawing right now. I'm really nervous. I've uh, seen The Cure here in 2004. And 2000, and I think 1996, but Jennifer says I'm wrong. <laughs> uh, I'm, well, and you may have called, maybe they, I, I, I don't know. Yeah. We'll, we'll check the facts. I'm not much of a fact checker. But I'm like, we're like dead center, sort of second, third row, and I'm excited and nervous and sad and all kinds of emotions. Yeah, we only have three more U.S. Cure shows left uh, on the tour, so... Getting a little sad. Like I don't want it to end. Yeah, I don't want it to end either. And it's like I'm a cure junkie. Like yeah, I, me too. I, what am I gonna do? We're we're doomed. We're cursed. Here's the atmosphere. You guys are like my mouth. You're kind of in a cure lyric. Don't let it in. Don't let us go back to the real life. Everything is uh, always. All those lyrics, yeah, but especially right now. It's just I'm. Never I've been enjoying in. myself so much, and yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I just never would have thought that like 20 years later I'd be doing this. No, it's gone really fast. Yeah, and it goes by as time as you get older, it goes by faster and. Not still here, but I'm, I'm trying to make this my last cure adventure. But I would say if they're touring in 10 years, no, you, no, it's see, it's all in the lyrics. You won't be, you, you, you'll say it's the last time, but it won't be exactly. Um, yeah, if they tour in 10 years, I'll, I'll be there. Giving up and going on are both the same dead entity, both the same old song, right? See you soon, <laughs> see you again, yes. Broadcasting for the Holy Hour podcast. Um, woot, woot. This is post. Where are we? Ha. Columbia. Columbia, Maryland. Merryweather Post Pavilion. Yeah. I finally got to see Sinking on this tour, which I've Banana seen it fish bones. before, but yeah, I haven't seen Banana Fishbone since 2012, so that was very nice. Paradise. But I can't hear myself because I'm deaf because I didn't have my earplugs tonight. So if I'm talking too loud, I'm sorry. Well, you sound congested too. You yeah, sound like you got I'm a little not, congested. I have congestion in my ear as well. So that I can't hear. I think I'm just not used to this climate anymore. Anyway. Yeah, if you, if you haven't been to the Mer Merriweather uh, Pavilion, it's literally surrounded by trees. It's like in a, like a little forest. Lots of humidity. Lots of humidity. <laughs> well, I thought the show was was great. I mean, this we were up in the front row, which was nuts. Um, I enjoyed it more than uh, any of the New York shows. Uh, yeah, I did too. I did too. Um, yeah, I wasn't expecting them to come back out and do Shake Dog Shake. Um, and so that was totally awesome. Um, I feel like the crowd was pretty into it around yeah, us, around us. Really like, yeah. But also nice. Yeah. Very nice. Holding places for people when they left to go get drinks or go to the bathroom. Yeah. That's safe. I thought that everybody was nice too, but I, I do think it's weird to like be in the very front 
of any show and have people very still, but I guess yeah. that's uh, that's true. Very much an American thing. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I don't know that it's ever been any different like that in America, but. I always like turn around and look back and think like, wow, what it would be like to, to be on stage playing to a bunch of people just like standing and staring at you. You I know what I mean? People were, were, I mean, the crowd, like even pretty far back seemed pretty into it, especially as the end started to build. I also thought actually in the beginning that uh, Mr. Smith was not that into it. Yeah, well, there were some technical issues yeah. and he was grumpy. Yeah. yeah. But then, like, the sun went down and everything was okay, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. And then they played If Only Tonight We Could Sleep, which was fantastic. Yeah, they seemed to be having a lot of fun towards the end, which is always nice. And what did they... They did some stuff that was, like... They played Never Enough early, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, on the, the walk, was it? The walk was played early and Push was played later. Yeah, I believe so. This is that's Hector, by the way. He wasn't gonna go to this show. <laughs> and uh, not. you didn't have tickets till when? Um, five minutes before doors opened, I found a pit ticket and I was sold this pit ticket for face value, which was fantastic. Well, your girlfriend was online. Brianna found a Cure fan, right? Who was here or something? Yeah, she was in line waiting to get in and. Uh, had an extra ticket and ended up selling it to me for the face value price. That's fucking great because we were keeping tabs, as I'm sure you would, were um, on tickets and there was no, like if you went on StubHub for this show, zero general admission tickets available, which is insane. So, yeah, there was whoa, that Nelly. One scalper that was selling it for 150 but I lost him. I guess timing was perfect for that one because if I would have found him, I would have lost the opportunity to just spend 80 instead of 150. So, how does there. how does this show compare to? You went to Denver and you went to the three Hollywood Bowls. Yes. Uh, okay. So comparison, I finally got to hear Sinking Live, which was fantastic, along with songs like Dressing Up, and I was up close to hear um, All I Want and Open and End. Uh, I would have to say is probably my favorite in the show that I thought I was going to not end up coming to. Right, so, right. It's a great uh, turn of events, I can say. Megan, do you know what we didn't hear tonight? What? Us or them. How good. Right? We also didn't hear Hungry Ghost. <laughs> I didn't want to hear that or Sleeping Off Dead, but they did do The End of the World, but I forgave them because they did Sinking yeah. and Banana Fish Bones and Shake Dog Shake and If Only Tonight We Could Sleep. And They so didn't do forgiven. Exploding Boy, but... Yeah. I know! Bring back Exploding Boy! As, every time I hear In Between Days, I'm like, okay, there's no Exploding Boy, but I think one time they did play... Because usually they play the Exploding Boy and then In Between Days, but... I think they did one time do it in a different order, though, but... I got really emotional during sinking. Oh. Yeah. yeah. And then they played It Can Never Be The Same, like, right after. Oh, yeah. wow. Robert got so emotional. Yeah, so did I. I definitely teared up. Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah. I, I think that's the first time I've heard him address it, too, because when he yeah. came back out, he said something about how it's a new song, and he, it's like he still hasn't been able to, like, contain it. Yeah. Contain the emotion, definitely. Yeah. yeah, it was. It's it's been. I think overall, like a running theme of seeing the cure in 2016 is seeing <laughs> or hearing Robert talk more and yeah. kind of be more open and on the one hand, like laugh about things and what he does. At least I don't remember him ever saying, "Oh, sorry, I'm not talking so much." Yeah, that's true. So that's been, it's been really interesting. And tonight, yeah, he said that about it can never be the same, which was cool. And then he also, after an encore, he said something about um, being famous and how it's really weird because he's just a normal person. They're all just normal. And as much as something to the effect of as many times as they've done this, you think that they'd be used to it by now, but they're honestly not. 
<laughs> and it, it's, all, it's still weird. And he's like looking at the floor, thinking it's the same tiles as his parents' <laughs> house or something. Yeah, it's the same floor he as that. He wanted parents. a train or something, slide a train yeah. on it or he something. He said he was going to, for the third encore, he was going to slide a train across the floor and scream. <laughs> 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 Slow crawl out of the Merryweather Pavilion. There's one thing to like want to meet your idol and when you first meet him or don't meet them or see them on stage, you're like, oh my God, there, there they are and it's so crazy. And then there's a thing of like some people who just want to meet somebody because they are a celebrity, because they right. are a famous person. <laughs> yep. But I was also thinking that w what I don't, what I wonder about being somebody like in his position, like if I were to sit next to him and he was like, I'm just normal, why, you know, why are you, why do you think I'm anything different? It's like, it's not that I think that Robert Smith is not normal. I think that what happened to him in his life is not normal. And it's like, he's super talented, he's a genius, whatever. But there's a lot of people that are really, really talented that just those things do not line up for them. Like the, a normal person in life, like things just don't line up and like happen. Do you know what I mean? So that's also another part of it. It's not just that like he's part of the band that's like changed my life. It's just uh, he's a person that's been very fortunate in this certain aspect. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how you ca you can have a normal life, especially if you're, if you're, f like, famous and recognizable. Yeah, I mean, he can't just think about all the things he can't do because of that. I mean, I guess, like, in thinking, what I, Head on the Door for me was, like, a really pivotal album for me, and it was, like, that point of discovery where I was you know, that girl that was isolated, young, and I found this music that, like, I mean, there was tons of music that was like this, but, you know, it was, like, this time in my life where I was, like, oh, I'm supposed to be really chipper all the time and be fake and go out and lay out and get suntans and, like, do things or be a certain way in life that I didn't relate to. Like, I just did not relate to people at all. Or I would just, like, go to school and people would just make fun of me for just existing. <laughs> and so I just felt very distant and disconnected from my school, my peers, and, like, this, like, normal mentality or whatever. And so when I discovered bands like The Cure, I remember Head on the Door was, like, really pivotal because I was like, oh, my God, this person is writing music that makes me feel connected to something or someone. So part of, like, meeting that person isn't necessarily because they're fucking famous. It's because they, they without even knowing this person or they're, whoever creates this music, they make me feel more connected. I think that's what it is. Like, I feel very connected to the music. So, you know, you want to meet the people that write that music. And... But I always looked at them as being normal people, you know? Um, but yeah, I mean, but Jennifer, I mean, even though, like, you know, it's like I totally recognized when I was a kid that they're, like, normal people, but at the same time, I really wanted to meet them. Me too, but I wanted to meet them because Ooh. I related so much to the music and the music changed my life. And just like you, I was a total outsider, totally isolated from people you know I always felt different but when I found the Cure's music I felt like I belonged to something right and it was really life-changing and then when I started going to all the Cure shows I met people who I were people who I didn't feel like an outsider with you know who who appreciated the music as much as I did who got like connected to the music as much as I did and that was also life changing for me meeting those fans those people who I'm most of them still friends with today 20 plus years later I really liked where we were tonight like there were some tall people around me but that always happens but I, I could still see pretty well and I could see everybody 
um, pretty clearly. So it was good for me to watch everybody because in the past when I've been that close, like I, ha there's always been tall people and I can only see like three out of five people, you know? So it was, I really liked where we were tonight and I was also just kind of watching and observing while well, I was dancing and singing, but also observing. Uh, I, Jason's just phenomenal. I mean, what was that song? Oh, End. Oh, God. I couldn't believe how good he was doing End. Like, uh, I was really blown away by that. I mean, he always does burn incredibly, but I never noticed on End before how good it was. Uh, but he was, he seemed to be really into that tonight, too, though. So, uh, yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, that is a difficult song to play. Is it? Yeah, there's a lot of rhythmic patterns that are tossed in there. I thought if only tonight we could sleep sounded really good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Really good. And sinking. I couldn't believe I got to see that because I, in my brain, like that was the one song I wanted to see. Well, that or the same deep water as you, but I really was wanting to see sinking. I know I've seen it before, but I haven't seen it in so many years that I always love it, to love it live. So I did not expect that. I was very happy. <laughs> oh, and they did, they did Kyoto song as well. Yeah, yeah. That was great. And all I want. Oh yeah, yeah that sounded good too. I really thought it was a great set list. I liked yeah. that they, they played a lot of the songs that they've been playing on this tour, yeah. but they just shook up the order a little bit. Yeah. It was a good chunk off each record. Definitely from the top and up. Yeah, I mean, we're still sort of missing a lot of 17 seconds, right? Oh, uh, yeah. And Faith. Yeah. I kind of, you know, they're always ending the songs happy, but I do kind of miss, like, when they used to end the shows with Faith or Forever. <laughs> <laughs> we all want to hear Forever. Bring on the sad, dark stuff, please. <laughs> well, that's, it's like the, the, um, Forest endings now are taunting because, like, tonight, like, you could see up close that Simon was holding it down, as he does, and Robert was, like, doing his thing, like, getting in his zone, and I could see Simon smiling, like, oh, come on, motherfucker, like, when yeah. are you gonna end this song? <laughs> yeah. And he just had to hold it down and hold it do yeah. down, and, like, so you, there's this, like, you know, I mean, I don't have proof of this, and but I feel like you could see the, their relationship. It's, like, it's kind of neat. And you just think, wow, these people have been doing this together for 40 years, almost. I yeah. think it's really cool to watch them, uh, what they do, like, in little jokes they have with each other. Because you know, yeah. like, Arusha, we have jokes, too, like, on certain <laughs> songs. I know. But it's really funny, like, to see what, what our jokes are, but to see what their jokes are. And, like, uh, Simon was running behind Roger and yeah. kind of teasing him, and that was just so funny. Yeah, I just saw that they were laughing, right. and then, like... And then at one point, Robert and Simon were, I don't know what song it was, they were touching each other's oh, yeah, shoulder to shoulder. Elbow, elbow, or yeah. Like, yeah. During a burn. It was yeah. a burn. Oh, really? And yeah. they were, like, burn. smiling after yeah. that at each other. And, that was and good. Simon smiled to Robert a few times, and then was Robert like, oh, was I, like, It's my oh. oob. Yeah, you're oh. sorry. All right. I I'll let you out tonight. <laughs> Is it a black car? Oh, yeah, that's Uber. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So we just said goodbye to Hector, uh, a nice gentleman that I met through the internet, through um, Instagram. His Instagram was cool, and he has this beautiful girlfriend named Brianna with uh, pink hair. Pink hair, and but anyway, that's another thing that happens on these. But. Anyway, so we just said goodbye to Hector. So basically, what is it? Today is June 21st, 22nd? 22nd. <laughs> 20, yeah, 22nd. 22nd. So I met, quote unquote, Hector, like online, let's say, in April or May. And I, all I was doing is like, we were all following each other. Like, and Brianna was like, we're going to make this cure sign that's like the cure in the uh, wish font. And I was like, oh my God, can I film you guys? when I'm in LA and they were like, sure. So cut to May 22nd, 23rd. And, you know, we had planned to meet up 
but I don't have his their phone number. And I see them, and I like run after them with, and I was my camera girl, and I'm like, wait. So we meet up, and then we they introduce me to their Australian friends who they'd been pen pals with. I mean, it all becomes this thing. So you know now. I kind of feel like, you know, Hector's and Brianna are new friends. They're really cool. Hector just hung out with Megan for the entire show, right? Yeah, yeah, that was super fun. New friends. And, uh, you know, a little, a little sad to say goodbye, you know, just because it's like... It's in this, like, cure world <laughs> of going crazy and seeing show after show. I mean, Hector was planning to go to three shows, and then they went to Denver, and then now he went to... Wherever the hell we are. So, Maryland. Maryland. So that's a part of it too, you know. Anyway. Because we're driving to uh, Charlotte, North Carolina tomorrow, which I'm super psyched up because guess who else we're going to meet? Guess. Oh, right. Gavin from the podcast. Yeah. Ooh, deer. Ah, there's a deer. Oh, my God. Holy crap. I do feel like I'm in Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> there's deer everywhere there. Yeah, we're going to meet Gavin and his, I'm going to call him his associate <laughs> because I suck and I know that Gavin works with another guy. I want to say like Damien or David or, but I can say the associate, Gavin and the associate tomorrow. Gavin, we're going to be driving seven hours. God help us. So we'll just... <laughs> it, my Fitbit automatically detects your activity and it chooses if you're walking, running, or riding a bike. And for some reason, when I'm dancing at a cure show, it thinks I'm doing a bike. Oh, nice. <laughs> and Megan has a great impression for how she thinks I dance. <laughs> so oh, my God. Is that another deer? Jesus. No. Right there. There's another yeah, deer. There's another one. Oh, my God. Yeah. All we're right, going to have to have to uh deer end. patrol deer patrol all right over and out team until next time oh my god yeah all we're right, gonna have patrol. to have to uh deer end. patrol deer patrol all right over and out team until next time All right, thanks guys. And yeah, you gotta watch out for the deer in the Northern Virginia area. Forgot about those. Little fuckers will run right out in front of you and tear your car all up. But I'm happy to report that they made it to Charlotte, North Carolina safely. So uh, stay tuned. Hopefully next week we'll have the episode up when we get to share the big crossover. Arusha, Lauren, and and Jennifer were there. And uh, myself and my associate Damien and, uh, and our buddy Matt. We all crossed paths, and uh, it was quite a quite an evening, and uh, an unusual show it turns out. So uh, I won't spoil of how a cure show could be unusual by this point, but it was, and uh, we'll tell you all about it. So do subscribe on iTunes so you don't miss it. Leave uh, a rating, a ranking if you want while you're there, and um, be sure to check us out on Instagram at the Holy Hour Podcast. And the Facebook page has been blowing up lately. So go over there and check it out on the, the Holy Hour podcast on Facebook where you can um, comment on specific episodes or just post your cure-related thoughts and stories as, as they come to you. We've been getting a, a good reaction lately. I want to give a special thanks to uh, people that have been reaching out and saying hi and saying they enjoy the podcast. Uh, Chris on the Facebook page, thanks so much. And Lisa as well. Um, been getting some nice emails, mostly via Instagram, and then uh, some nice emails from Nicole and, and Charles Murphy sent a really nice email. Thanks so much for listening. Charles uh, was telling me about his awesome Cure collection, and I posted some of the pictures on Facebook there. You'll get to see them if you go to the Facebook page. Um, just an amazing Cure collection on vinyl. It's pretty much everything in there. It, it's like a, a kid in a toy store, if you see that. It's, it's it's beautiful. I, I, you just can stare at it for hours. And um, so go and admire this wonderful man's wonderful cure collection. Post the pictures on there. And um, yeah, so uh, we got a nice email from Brian from uh, last week's episode. Brian Greenspan from New York. And um, yeah, thanks again for listening and contributing. And um, anybody else that wants to get in touch, feel free to drop us a line. Um, 
at any of the social media that I just mentioned or my email, uh, gavinconnor at gmail.com. You can find that link on iTunes as well. And uh, like I said, we're going to keep this one short. I just want to throw it in there because uh, I like the way everybody had to say and, and like I said, have a soft spot for Meriwether Post Pavilion. So thanks so much to Arusha for sharing that. As always, be sure to go over to curefandocumentary.com to check out Arusha's project. She's working on a Cure Fan documentary called Push. And um, it stemmed from her traveling around the first time on the uh, Blood Flowers tour in 2000. And uh, so it's an epic tale of love for this, for this band. And uh, it looks amazing. And we all want to see this movie really bad. So be sure to donate some money when you're over there. Check it out. Just drop her a few bucks to make it possible to make this thing. Um, become a reality and get out to as many people as possible and um, just sign up to all the social media that you can link to at Cure Fan Documentary so you can get updates on it if nothing else so check it out um, check her out on uh, Instagram as well at Cure Fan Doc and um, yeah so until next time Charlotte's around the corner in Atlanta we're winding down guys thanks so much for listening this has been the Holy Hour Podcast I'm Gavin and uh, talk hard